Hey everyone, Matt Pridham here from Web Diligence, and today we're going to go over the basics of Shotplot on the iPad. Alright, so Shotplot loads up here to the main screen and gives us a, a few instructions. The first is we do recommend that you place your iPad in the landscape orientation. It allows for uh, the two pane view to show and it makes navigating a little bit easier. Alright, so it instructs us to start here by pressing on the plus sign to create a new plot. We'll go ahead and do that. The next thing it asks is to choose a target. And we're going to choose from the Canadian DCRA group. And we'll say 300 meters. And we'll choose this target. Again, we get a few more instructions here. The shot plot tells us to simply touch the screen to plot a shot and to touch and hold that shot in order to reposition it. We'll re revisit this in just a moment. You'll notice up at the top left corner here, uh, we're told which target it is that we're using. Elapsed time has not begun. It will begin as soon as we place our first shot, though. And uh, we have our scores at the bottom, our current score, as well as the cumulative score for this target. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and place our first shot. Uh, we'll say it landed a bit high. And you'll notice our elapsed time has begun. And I'll bring you over here to the shot window. In the top left corner, it's going to uh, keep track of which number you're on. Of course, this is our first shot. Uh, by default, uh, your first two shots are going to be a sighter, and you know, that's uh, where this checkbox comes into play. You'll also notice that um, the score has not uh, changed yet. We can uncheck this, and it becomes a scoring shot, or we can recheck the sighter box, and uh, it now scores for zero. So we've landed a bit high, and we're going to make a second shot. We know we're going to have to come down, uh, likely, um, let's say, three clicks. And uh, that'll bring us closer to the V-Bull. And we'll go ahead and enter the amount of adjustment we needed for this particular shot. So we'll say down three clicks. And uh, this is a, a mighty fine shot, and I think we'd like to convert this to a scoring shot. So let's uncheck that as a cider. And we can continue with uh, the rest of this um, this relay. So we'll place a few more shots here. Well, let's say the wind is picking up and uh, it's not the best day ever. Let's say for our ninth shot, we, we rushed it. We rushed it really hard and unfortunately we, we missed the target altogether. And we'll place that uh, down here in the miss box. You'll notice it scores for zero. And we'll place uh, a tenth shot uh, over here. And lastly, our eleventh shot. As you remember, our first shot was a cider, So uh, we do need to take eleven shots. And this is a good time to explore the repositioning. Uh, let's say, for example, you um, touch the screen over here by accident, but indeed uh, the eleventh shot was a V-Ball. So we can just press and hold and begin to drag this shot around wherever we would like to place it. You'll notice up here we're now in positioning mode instead of placement mode. And wherever we let go is what it will score for. And you'll notice the score auto updates as we drag through the different scoring zones. And we'll call this a V-Ball. All right, so with our one miss, we, we attained a score of a 41 with four V-Balls. And uh, from here, we can just go ahead and finish and save. And this brings us over to the details for this particular plot. Um, we just put a, a default name in here, but you can always change this to whichever you'd like. Something like that. And the next thing we can edit here is the firearm used. Of course, we have uh, just opened Shotplot for the first time, so we don't have any firearms entered. We'll go ahead and create a new one. We can just enter something in here quickly. Say it's a Remington 700. And so far, we've put 1,200 shots through the, the stainless steel barrel. We expect that sometime around 6,000 shots, our groups are going to uh, start to really open up. And uh, the caliber is a 308. 
Winchester. So let's quickly talk about uh, total shots and expected barrel life. Uh, we put this number in here so that as we continue to plot, when we plot our 6,000th shot, shot plot will alert us and say, listen, you've probably outshot your barrel and it's time to uh, think about a new one. Okay, so we'll move over to sights, what kind of sights we used. Um, maybe you're using a scope, and in this case uh, we were using a diopter or an aperture sight, sometimes called a peep sight. Uh, our diopter size was uh, was 1.0 millimeters. Our aperture was 3.6 millimeters. And it was indeed a plastic round. So now we can go to, I'm sorry, um, plastic round. Uh, these are these, the shape or the particular uh, material type for your, your front aperture. And um, you can choose from some metal ring or the double ring. Um, Many people use just the uh, the plastic round or the uh, the metal rings. All right, so uh, moving on, uh, let's go over to ammo, and we can either enter some custom ammo or we can choose from our factory list here, and uh, let's do that. Let's let's go find some 308 ammo. Let's keep scrolling around here, and 308 Winchester. We'll click there. And uh, let's go grab some Lapois 155 CNRs. And you notice that's updated over here. Our distance shot was indeed 300 meters. Uh, but we could change this, for example, if you wanted to use a 300 meter target at a different distance. Uh, this is how you go about doing that. Shooting range, again, we uh, need to enter a shooting range. And in this case, you can go ahead and, and click the Find Me button up here if, um, if your device has uh, 3G service and you're out in the field or if you happen to be on a Wi-Fi network, uh, chances are it will deliver you results and, and autofill your altitude here. Um, the other thing you can do is uh, aim at your target from the shooting position with your iPad instead of your rifle and uh, press the Start button here in order to um, measure the angle that you're shooting to your target. Now, unfortunately, I'm, I'm doing this on a computer simulator, so the uh, the Find Me button and the angle to target doesn't work, but I assure you it does on your iPad. So let's enter a name here for our range. Uh, let's say uh, Bull Meadows. And next we'll go over to our weather details. Again, uh, if you have internet connection and um, the GPS chip in your iPad, feel free to hit the Find Me button and this should auto load. Uh, otherwise, just go ahead and enter it by hand. And we can go ahead and choose the direction that the wind is blowing from. And keep in mind, uh, wind angle is is only important so long as we have a wind velocity. If we go and set this to zero, wind velo wind angle is, is now negligible and uh, will not affect uh, what's going on. So we'll set this back to 10, just uh, for argument's sake. And lastly, you can enter some notes about the entire shooting session, uh, perhaps um, if it was a, a really gusty day or whatever it is that you'd like to leave yourself notes for when you come back and, and uh, look over this at a future date. So uh, we'll leave this blank, but uh, lastly we just click the Save button up here in order to uh, save this profile into our plots. We now notice it shows up over here. Um, by clicking on it one time, it shows us the details of this plot here and, and uh, we can quickly at a glance look over the plots that we have. And we can also edit this particular plot by clicking the Edit Log button here. And this will bring us right back in and um, we can make some adjustments if we like. We could finish and save. We could uh, delete some shots. We could add some more shots. Do whatever you like here. And the last thing that uh, we'll go over quickly is we can head over to the settings here 
and we can choose from a few things. Uh, we do have a black and a white color theme. If you're out in the direct sunlight, uh, you'll notice that the, uh, the white theme is much better for your purposes. Uh, we can also change some of the units. The uh, scope click increments we can set here. And we can also choose uh, some other units that show up as we finish and save. And lastly, we can change a few target settings. Uh, the press and hold to reposition a shot. Um, you noticed this when we, uh, when we moved our shot around. We had to press and hold for about half a second in order to uh, initiate that, that reposition mode. Uh, but you can change this to be a longer value if you find that you're accidentally moving shots. And then uh, once we've let go of the shot, it takes two seconds for the reposition mode to go away. Now something to mention here is that even though we have this set to two seconds, if you simply press and release on the screen to place a, another shot, it'll automatically jump you back into placement mode and, and this doesn't come into play. What this really refers to is you can drag a, a shot around, move it around, let go, put your finger back down and move it without having to press and hold so long as you're within that two second timeout. All right, well, those are the basics of, of shot plot. And I hope you'll join me again when we dig a little bit deeper and get into the stats and uh, talk a bit more about the uh, various options. See you next time, guys. Hope you learned something.